Happy Camper Radio starts in three, two, one. one, one, one. It is good to be back with you again. Hello, everybody. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And no doubt about it, my friends, you can be a happy camper, too. This is the Happy Camper Radio Show. We have got a great and informative program. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some very serious issues today on the show. And if you're an online shopper, I want you to pay extra careful attention to what we're going to talk about because I think you're going to be able to apply it not only in making camping purchases online, but any time that you do an online purchase anywhere. So stick around for that. Uh, how many of you are back from the Super Bowl? Did you travel to Glendare, Arizona? Did by chance you go camping last weekend? Uh, not necessarily in Arizona, but just about anywhere, and took in all of the Super Bowl excitement. Well, we can sit back and say now that the 2014-2015 football season is behind us, and like in any Super Bowl game, you have winners and you have losers. And unfortunately, and this bothers me, folks, and and I'm sure it does you too if you're you're a good, down-to-earth person like I consider myself to be. But last week, I was watching on television right after the game. And in fact, even a couple days after the Super Bowl was over, there were some people who did some online shopping for tickets to the big event. And they went as far as to make their hotel reservations. They flew down to uh, the Phoenix area. They checked into the hotel. They had all their party paraphernalia with them. And they got there only to find out that the tickets that they were using were either fake or the tickets that they had hoped on buying were non-existent. And you know and I know the Super Bowl is a big event, and sometimes people will pay more than the face value of those tickets. There was one gentleman I watched on television, him and his young son, they were from Seattle, they bought tickets to the game And I can only imagine they bought it from somebody online, and they spent $7,000 for a pair of tickets. They arrived at the big event, and they found out that the tickets were fake. And in order to enjoy the game and get in there with a good set of tickets, they ended up spending another $7,000. Can you imagine $14,000 to see a football game? I will sit back and tell you I am one, you know, I don't sit back and tell people how to spend their own money. If that's how they want to spend it and they're diehard football fans and they take in the big event and they get something out of it, hey, so be it. I'm happy for you. I know I wouldn't spend that kind of money for a one-day event. And sadly, the Seattle Seahawks lost. So, you know, it was uh, it was a double injury for that poor guy and his son. And uh, they were in tears. I I really felt sorry for them. But today we're going to be talking about online shopping and what you can do to be safe. Our phone number here at the Happy Camper Radio Show is 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, add us to Circles on Google+, and now subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. Very easy to do. Every one of our social media icons can be found right there on our website, www.happycamperradio.com. Always got some useful information there for you to look over. So visit our website anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And while you're there, make sure you click on the RSS feed button. And this way you can subscribe to the show and never miss a single episode. Let's head on over to the shout out window. We have got some newcomers and we want to say hello to them and recognizing them for being a part of this great Happy Camper Radio podcast. First of all, let's say hello to the folks at Funtown RV and It's More Fun Outdoors. They like us on Facebook. Also, hello to Mandy Morello from London, Brooke from Oregon, Genevieve LeClaire, 
William Sweeney from Long Island, New York, Samantha from New York City, also hello to Craig Hall, and to Brad Fuller from Texas. They're all following us on Twitter. To Todd Oyen and the fine folks over at CK Tech Connect Incorporated, who uh, added us to circles on Google+. And finally, we want to say hello to Rebecca Thompson, who subscribed to us on YouTube. Thank you all so very much for joining us and being a part of the Happy Camper Radio Experience. Would you like to be a guest on our show? We'd love to have you. Get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com, or give us a call, 404-537-CAMP. And let us know that you would like to be on the show. Anything in the world of camping is up for grabs. If you want to be on the show, we'll talk about it. Definitely send me an email. Uh, the easiest thing for you to do when we talk about this quite often is to sign up for a Google Plus account. And make sure that you add us to your circles when you do that. And this way, we'll add you back because every now and then, we will put out an alert to everybody in our YouTube circles that we're going to open the window for anybody who wants to be on the show and talk about anything in the world of camping. And you will get one of those notifications if we have you in our circles. Hey, speaking of online shopping, uh, do any of you uh, happen to need any immediate camping supplies? I now have an opportunity for you to check out some great manufacturers of camping equipment and you can make a secure purchase online and they've got some great catalogs for you to look to right there from your very own home computer we have recently signed up for some affiliate programs and you can find some ads right on our home page at happycamperradio.com every time you click one of the ads and browse through their collection of camping supplies no matter what it is when you click on an ad and make a purchase you help to support this great happy camper radio experience so check them out anytime day or night on our homepage www.happycamperradio.com have you recently bought online have you ever bought any used equipment there's a difference a lot of times when you are making a purchase online from a reputable manufacturer you can count on for the most part that your transaction online is going to be secure I know in a lot of cases and we hear about them every now and then on the nightly news where a big well-known company that has locations all across America had their data breached i'm not going to mention any names but you can probably sit back and use your imagination and think yeah i remember i remember that big company and they all told us to go out and buy uh or or not buy because a lot of times they will provide it they will provide uh information at the credit bureaus for you to check your credit to make sure that none of your personal information has been breached i'm not trying to scare anybody to not shopping online i can sit back and proudly say that in all the years that i have made financial transactions online never once have i experienced a problem i made my transaction i always paid with a credit card that is so important do not use a debit card use a credit card in all cases because your transaction is going to be even more secure and your personal information is going to be more protected. And if you have any problems at all with the purchase you make, chances are the manufacturer or the store that you bought from is going to rectify the problem and make you a happy customer because they want return business. But again, you know, if you shop with one of those debit cards, they don't offer the same protections that a credit card has. So you want to, in all cases, if you possibly can, make your purchases using a credit card just because the debit card has a visa or mastercard logo to it does not mean it is a credit card some people don't know that but anytime i have all purchased equipment online especially camping equipment i have always used a reputable company with a national name one that is synonymous with the world of outdoors and camping and again i never had a problem and this is just not related to camping supplies if you ever considered shopping 
at another website where you could go to buy used equipment, that is a totally different story. And this is where I want you to pay very careful attention. Long before the internet came around, if you wanted to buy and sell goods, you would take out an ad or respond to an ad in your local Sunday paper. Or maybe they have a daily paper, but the classified section of the paper was usually loaded with all kinds of items that you could buy or sell. Today, many of the products that are bought and sold are done online. And because of the Internet, because of technology and where has it has gone, newspapers have taken a big hit. And even though there are some classified ads still available in the paper, most people, when they go shopping, are going to go to a website where they can not only look at the item because there is a photograph posted, they can get an idea of how far away from their home this item is, and they can make direct contact with the individual who is buying or selling and agree to meet up somewhere so they can take a look at the product and possibly buy or sell. A conscientious buyer or seller will put information online where you can contact them, but you're not going to be going right to the buyer or seller's home because they don't know who you are. And of course, you don't know who they are. And they're being very security conscientious. Most of these transactions, of course, will include cash. Not too many people are going to accept a check uh folks for the most part don't have credit card machines and are not going to take credit cards but if a transaction is going to transpire then chances are the seller is going to provide the item and the buyer will hand over cold hard cash have you ever used the website craigslist before to buy or sell goods i am not trying to scare anybody into not using craigslist but Just recently, over the past three weeks, here in the metro Atlanta area, I need to bring to your attention two incidents that occurred. They were crimes, and they they happened because people bought and sold on Craigslist. The first one involved an elderly couple from a suburb outside of the metro area, Marietta, Georgia. They responded to a Craigslist ad. There was a 69-year-old gentleman who uh, was looking to buy a 1966 Ford Mustang. Um, he hadn't had a Ford Mustang since he was back from Vietnam, but he really wanted to have one. He places an ad on Craigslist saying, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Somebody responded and says, yes, I've got one. And apparently that uh, potential seller had a photograph that they provided to him. He was interested. The only thing was this couple would have to drive to South Georgia in order to meet the potential buyer and look at the vehicle. It was several hours away in Telfair County. Most of you probably never even heard that location before, but it's a, a, a small county in South Georgia. Sometimes later, after this couple drove to Telfair County, their family members reported them missing. They haven't been seen or heard from. The authorities in Telfair County launched a search in that area, and sad to say, they discovered the couple's bodies not very far away from this pond where they found their SUV submerged in the pond. Uh, It's a sad story all the way around. Police did make an arrest in that case. They charged a local resident with murder. And at this particular time and point, there's no indication that the Ford Mustang ever existed. This is what happens when you respond to an ad and you don't take some extra precautions. And I'm going to explain what some of the things you can do, uh, regardless if you're buying or selling camping equipment, uh, an RV, a motorhome, whatever it may be on Craigslist. There are some things that you can do to protect yourself. A week later, after this incident, as sad as that was, there were two gentlemen who responded to an ad on Craigslist. Uh, Somebody in the metro Atlanta area wanted to buy a pit bull terrier. 
and they had one for sale. These two men from North Georgia drove all the way down to Atlanta to meet this potential buyer. Whether or not they brought the dog with them, I don't know. I would assume they would have. Because if they're going to drive all that way, uh, they're just not going to have uh, somebody look at a picture of the dog. They probably brought the dog down and says, you know, hey, do you want the dog? Here's how much it is, you know, and, and that would be that. Well, they agreed to meet around midnight outside a Metro Atlanta home. Now, while these two men and the potential buyer met in the front yard of this resident, uh, something, something transpires between these two men and the buyer. The buyer is shot and killed by one of the sellers. The sellers jump in their vehicle, they drive down the street, and they call police. They inform the authorities that they just shot somebody. Police were called to the location. An investigation was underway. The gentlemen were uh, transported to the police station for questioning. I don't know what happened after that, but I do know that when the officers arrived on scene... They found the body of a deceased male in the front yard. They also reportedly found a gun at the scene. This is what happens when some people use Craigslist and they they decide they're going to uh, get involved in some criminal activity. You definitely don't want to be a part of that. Craigslist can be a very dangerous place to do business. Buyers and sellers, of course, they don't know one another. The parties have never met before. Uh, one party assumes that everybody is going to be honest and an honest transaction is going to take place. But the person you're talking to on the other end of the phone admit, you know, you know nothing about that person. You don't know where they're coming from, what type of background they have. You don't know if they have a product to buy or sell. But the bottom line is, in order for you to get that product, you're going to have to meet face-to-face -face with that individual. Now, keep in mind, there's many good products that can be found on Craigslist, and not all transactions are going to involve criminal activity. For the most part, when people answer a classified ads on Craigslist, everything's going to transpire just right. Uh, you're going to see an item. You're going to respond to it. Uh, you're going to meet with the individuals. You're going to shake hands. Uh, if the sale is made, a transaction is going to transpire. You're going to walk away with your goods. Everybody's going to be happy. But regardless, remember, and remember this, folks, uh, your safety is more important than any piece of gear. Considering these recent incidents here in Georgia, I went on to Craigslist, and this is what uh, really prompted me to do this particular episode. I went in there searching for some camping gear, and I found a number of camping-related items for sale, anything from stoves to lanterns to pop-up campers to RVs. They were advertised on Craigslist. And again, uh, if you wanted to buy any of these items, chances are you're going to have to meet up with somebody somewhere to take a look at the product and decide whether or not you want to make a purchase. Buyers may find some vintage camping gear on Craigslist. You know, you, you want to buy some of these things because it kind of takes you back in a way. To your your young childhood days when you uh, get to be my age if you're you're much younger than i am then you probably have an appreciation for that and a lot of times you're going to find these items online at a place like craigslist the easiest thing for you to do if you want to buy used products is to use ebay the transactions are safe you never have to uh, personally meet the seller Oh, you make your uh, purchases online with a credit card, and the items will be shipped to your home. And chances are you can see right there on eBay the reputation of the seller. In fact, there are some people who do this for a living. We have one lady right up the street that uh, she has an eBay business that she runs out of her house, and she's constantly buying and selling goods on eBay. It works out very well for her. She never meets the buyers or the sellers, and everything is conducted online and she for the most part doesn't seem to have any problem with it and it's a safe alternative to craigslist another thing you can do and don't ever overlook this possibility is visit your local yard sales in your community you'll find all kind of good stuff for sale uh, at yard sales and there's signs just about everywhere think about it you're driving home from work you're in your neighborhood and maybe you're a few neighborhoods over 
and you see signs that says yard sale this coming Saturday from uh, 12 noon to 6 p.m. Check it out. You never know what you may find at yard sales. If you're going to shop a website like Craigslist for anything, here is my suggestion to you. Again, don't distrust everybody. You shouldn't have to live your life looking over your shoulder and looking at every individual that you encounter and say to yourself, this person's crooked. I'm going to stay away from them. That's really no way to live your life. Again, there's a lot of good transactions that can be made on Craigslist, but you want to be safe. Your family safety, anybody that is with you, you want them to be safe and secure as well. My advice to you, if you're going to use Craigslist to buy anything in the line of camping equipment or otherwise, agree to meet the buyer or the seller in the lobby of a local police station. That is going to be the safest meeting location for you. If you are selling something on Craigslist and you agree to meet the buyer at the police station and the buyer doesn't want to do that, that is a transaction you don't need to make anyway. Talk to the individual and see if they will agree to meet at the local police station. And I don't think you're going to have a police department anywhere in this country that's going to fault you for wanting to do that. It is a public place. It is really the safest place that you can conduct any form of transaction. Legitimate buyers and sellers are going to understand your concerns. And again, if the buyer or seller refuses, then avoid going altogether. Just hang up the phone. Thank you for the call. Thank you for your interest. And let that be that. If the sale is going to involve, say, a big product, let's say you want to buy what they're advertising, um, a big travel trailer. If they really want to sell that item and they consider you to be a potential buyer, they're going to hook up that travel trailer to the back of their pickup truck, to the back of their car, and they're going to haul it to the front of the police station. Probably park it legally, too, so they don't end up getting a ticket. But, you know, the, the photographs are going to be right there online for you to see. Probably the exterior, the interior. They're going to talk about how good of a product this is. It was well taken care of. One owner, two owners, whatever the case may be. All you have to do is go look at it. If they can't go as far as to haul that travel trailer down to the front of the police station for you to see, it's a product you don't need. Move on. Another thing you can do, too, is insist that the seller send you a photograph of the license plate on the back of that RV. Also have them take a photograph of the title or the vehicle identification number, the VIN. But never, under any circumstances, agree to meet at an undisclosed location. Even public places like shopping centers are not safe. Just because there's a lot of people around doesn't necessarily mean that crimes cannot happen and crimes won't take place. But if you agree to meet at a police department where you know your all eyes are going to be on you, the, uh, the bad guy is not going to have anything to do with that. People who are honest will be there. They will show up and they will understand your concern and why you want to meet at a place like this. If you can avoid it, never carry large amounts of cash with you. A lot of the transactions I've heard about over the years involving Craigslist, and I can't believe some people would actually respond to these. If a person advertises 25 brand new uh, smartphones for sale in their original cases, what does that tell you? They're stolen. And chances are, if somebody shows up with a large amount of cash in hand, most likely they're going to get robbed or worse. But, I mean, this can happen with any product at, at any time. You talk about the individuals who wanted to see a brand new car, or not, not an old, a brand new car, but a, a, a Ford Mustang, a 60s model Ford Mustang. Chances are the, the person who... Uh, robbed these and killed these individuals knew that they were coming down with a lot of cash in hand so this is why you need to be extra precautious if you're going to be carrying large amounts of money but if you can avoid doing that 
definitely um, uh, avoid carrying any any a large amount of cash in your pocket. Discuss some possible payment options with the buyer or the seller ahead of time. See if they'll take a personal check. Uh, I doubt they will, but it never hurts to ask. Possibly a cashier's check. But whatever you do, never under any circumstances, if you use a shopping site like Craigslist to buy or sell used equipment, never meet with these individuals at an undisclosed location. Always insist on meeting at the police department. Again, Craigslist is not a bad place to go shopping. Most people who do their business there will find they have worry-free transactions. But it never helped. It never hurts to be over precautious. And I do want to say this too. In all fairness to Craigslist, I have been to their website and I looked at the information right there at the very beginning. They have sections that you can read and advice that they give you on what you can do to be safe any time you're making a Craigslist transaction. So definitely, if you're going to shop that website, make sure that you look through all the information right there from the very beginning. Find out what you can do to be safe. If you need to, go back and listen to this particular program for more information because you just can't go wrong. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. We're going to go to the state of Mississippi to a year-round campground. It is known as Fernando Point. Not too often do people go camping this time of the year, but... I can say this much, not all campgrounds are open at this time, not all public campgrounds anyway. In fact, there's quite a few private campgrounds, depending upon what part of the country they're in and how much snow that has accumulated on their campground, they may be closed. But here's one that you may want to consider if you want to go somewhere with your family. It's located just south of Memphis. It's the Hernando Point Recreation Area. It sits on Arcabutla Lake. This is a great campground, and I think you would really enjoy visiting here. Great waterfront, uh, rolling hills, forested with shady mixtures of oak, hickory, beech, sweet gum. And folks, please stay away from those sweet gum trees. I had a sweet gum tree in my yard up until about three years ago. I had that thing whacked down. If you're not familiar with sweet gum trees, they drop these ugly little balls of whatever you want to call them, and you don't want to be parked under one of those trees. Other than that, you know, some great shaded areas if you want to go camping and enjoy the outdoors, this is the place to do it. And uh, they've got swimming, uh, fishing, boating, hiking, all kind of great information is right there on their homepage. Uh, check out some of the activities and amenities that they have there. Uh, interpretive trails, a picnic shelter. This particular campground, I believe they have, and I think it's listed right here, yes, 83 family sites and one group day use shelter, all with electrical hookups. So you can bring your RV, your pop-up camper, your motor home, your tents at any time of the year. But we're going to have it on our homepage all week long. Just look for this featured campground section over on the right-hand side of the page. It's a great place to visit. It is the Hernando Point Campground in Mississippi, and it is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. And as always, if you have a campground that you would like for us to feature on the program, by all means, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com, and make sure you include a link to the campground website, because if you've been there and you've enjoyed it, chances are any one of our listeners, including myself, would want to visit there too. That's about going to wrap things up for me, folks, and I hope you had a wonderful and informative program Feel free to check out our website anytime, www.happycamperradio.com. Look in the podcast episode section. You'll find any one of our previous episodes there. Don't forget you can catch us online anytime at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, and add us to your circles on Google+. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Uber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And no doubt about it, my friends, we're going to make a happy camper out of you. See you next week. This is Happy Camper Radio.